My name is Abby. I'm deeply passionate about all things wild and have made it my mission to explore and document many of the world's most stunning landscapes through human-powered adventure. Each quest is totally unique. Some traverse exposed moorlands and rugged mountaintops. Others whiz through bustling market towns and historical cities. They see me dive down deep amongst marine life, follow world-renowned archaeological discoveries, and travel through some of the most tranquil valleys and mystical forests accessible only on foot. My goal is always one of discovery and awareness. Getting outside is now more important than ever before, with obesity rates maintaining record highs and mental health issues affecting over one in four individuals. In building an archive of films, I aim to leave you looking for a challenge, ready to break free from the monotony of everyday life and be inspired by nature enough to want to give back. Ultimately, I want to see you don your adventure boots and spend more time in the wild for the benefit of mental and physical health. I've realised that you don't have to do something crazy or radical to change how you feel about your life. You just have to get up and get out. I face my own trials with mental ill health and chronic pain, as no doubt you'll see on my travels. But alongside building a strong support network, getting outside and taking the time to reconnect with nature has helped me move further along the road of personal discovery. So, here's me inviting you to join me on my adventures as I explore this awe-inspiring planet. There will be hardships along the way, and we're not guaranteed to succeed. But it takes a brave heart and a courageous soul to commit to the unknown. Now all you have to do is decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. Are you ready? Let's go. Coffee! <laughs> Ooh, that, my friends, is rather nice. Good morning folks and welcome to my first trail of 2023. I am in the very busy Drummond Rocket on Loch Ness. You may recognise that name from my Great Glen Way journey which travels the length from Fort William to Inverness along the Great Glen. But I am not going to be walking the Great Glen but instead Glen Afric. Yes, I am here Ta -da! <laughs> at the start of the Afric and Kintail Way. So it's 44 miles from here, drum the jocket through the glen to Morvec on the other side. I'm going to be doing it in three days. I've got a campsite, I've got a wild camp, and hopefully endless vistas of pure beauty. This is a very wild and remote hike, but I've been told there's half decent footpaths and trails along the way. Um, it's inspired by one of my good friends who introduced me to Glen Afric, which is said to be one of the most beautiful glens here in Scotland. And I just can't wait to experience it all. And actually, <laughs> Uh, let it wash away the stresses and strains of the last couple of days. I drove up in my van and sort of had a bit of a breakdown and it's still not sorted and I've left it in a lay-by and I've had camera issues and on and on it goes. I haven't really done much walking either in the last six months since I finished the Hebridean Way last October. Uh, so I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm a big ball of fuzzy energy and I just can't wait to get started. So the trail begins here outside of the Loch Ness Hub which is uh, really quite a hub of activity actually <laughs> um, so I'm just basically going to walk down through the town now and head off into the hills can't wait to share the journey with you let's get the show on the road <laughs> Boom. let's go only to get run over <laughs> Luck. Thank you! <laughs> oh, he didn't run me over, he wished me luck. That was nice. <laughs> to be honest, I never know whether it's a good thing when a local wishes you luck. It's like, hmm, do they know something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go! Morning! Alright. Hi. first tentative steps feels good and I love how whilst yes 
walking through this little housing estate there's also just casually a highland coo over there which is super cute nice way to start a hike well, i mean i know i'm about 100 meters in but so far the signing's been great i like it it was here that i felt like the trail officially began as i climbed into the hills and left the hustle and bustle of drum the jocket behind Sitting on the flanks of Glen Urquhart, this was the Craig Morney woodland, packed full with waymarked trails and even an ancient fort. Oh, we have a billboard. Look out, it says. A battle awaited past visitors of the woods of Drum the Jocket. A thousand years ago, the Viking Prince Morney retreated to the top of the hill here with his army, pursued by native Scots. He met his end nearby and lives on in local place names. Oh, look at this, Douglas fir. We've just seen a couple of those massive trees. Love it. I love it how you just like feel like in the middle of nowhere and then it's like CCTV in operation. It's like, are you sure? Are you being honest with me? Because I need a wee and that's an infringement of my human rights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Protect the trees and all that, but when you gotta go, you gotta go. What is this? Ooh, there's fun things. Woodland ants build their own nests out of trees, needles, twigs, and grains in the soil. Question, how do wood ants protect their nests? By eating your life, that's my answer. Formic acid smells like vinegar. Up to 12 times their own length, they can spray it. That's repulsive. Goodbye. Second one. God, this is gonna really slow me up. Spiders! No. Just no. Not having that. I'm in beautiful nature. Just don't think about the spiders. Actually, I'm joking. I don't mind spiders at all. Very important for the circle of life. But I just don't need them in my mind, you know? Boundaries. Number three. Please don't be spiders. <laughs> Bumblebees! We like bumblebees. How do bees recognize each other? Good question. Bumblebees have smelly feet to identify themselves and each other. Does that make me a bumblebee? I hope so. <laughs> you know what? Whilst it looks like I'm walking through absolute forest decimation, <laughs> Uh, this clear felling is done to help the regrowth of native species and you can see the odd tree coming up here and there, bit of beech, bit of mountain ash and so on. But the open space it has created is so nice and you can see right down over the glen rather than being just in this cocoon of trees it's very very open and I'm enjoying that as we've gained this little bit of elevation. There is a slight hint of road noise but it's nothing major and I'm taking comfort from the fact that I've driven that road many times. I can remember the music I was listening to, you know, good vibes in the van and all that. <laughs> there in the centre of the screen is Loch Ness, waving goodbye. See you in three days, my friend. There's the turning down to Milton and we, as is beautifully signed, zero effort at all so far regarding navigation. We're heading now up into the forest. Quite up actually. <laughs> Definitely quite up. <sighs> Ooh, Glen Coyalty Way. That's another trail. I don't know this trail. It's raining. <laughs> I'm being really lazy and not doing anything about it. Despite the fact that I can see my breath, uh, I'm feeling warm. I think it's just the adrenaline of being like, woohoo, trail. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, this trail I haven't actually mentioned is quite a new trail. So it's officially opened in 2015. And I have to say, whilst I'm just plodding along very, very slowly, fiddling and faffing with everything and adjusting and settling into a bit of a pace, there's something to be said for a good old forestry track nice and easy on the nap and uh you can just plod along and i don't know just enjoy life and it's nice just letting my head wander and 
park everything that's happened in order to get here and just just arrive you know the air is clear there's lots of birds chaffinch heard some starlings sparrows just all tweeting around and life is good on the trail about two miles in <laughs> ask me in 20. <laughs> Ah, daylight again. These are some intermittently dark forests. And uh, <laughs> I might think that was an Afric way sign because uh, it now doesn't say that. Actually, it's pretty crazy how dense these conifers can really get. And you know, that's one of the reasons why they are being felled back. Obviously, these are a harvest they're a crop to be utilized by the forestry industry but they don't allow any light to penetrate through that canopy that obviously then means other species can't grow animals can't thrive and so on and so forth it's very stale it's very it's just a monoculture of one particular tree so whilst this side yes there's a bit of um silver birch and stuff here on the edge just it's deep it's dark it looks scary and then this side where they felled it i mean we've seen it already walking along this trail big broad open they've left the native deciduous trees so they drop their leaves every year and hopefully over the years that's just going to mean wildlife and plant life can flourish once again and just around the corner this is the river enric we get to follow this for a little bit to a lock beautiful sound that is nice running water in Scotland. Apple time. Ooh, that's a good apple. Mmm, what a very good apple. Right, so we've got about, whoops, a thousand different paths here. Ah, here we go. So I'm supposed to be down there. Whoops. But first, billboard! Woohoo! It's <laughs> a bit of a weird thing, this billboard. Hello. Welcome to Balneen. It's about walking and buzzards and red deer, both of which I've seen and not managed to film yet. So, souls. And here's us. Woo. We've just walked along here. And this is the lock I just said about. Lock Meekly, Meekly, maybe. And we're just gonna follow all the way, shooby dooby dooby, into the wilderness. Well, to Canuck in the campsite actually, but still. Huh. That's the first sign with mileage on. Four and a half miles we've walked, apparently. I mean, that's ten to go. <laughs> God. Whoa. That's unexpected. Freaking lorry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> beep, beep. Well, if that doesn't prove this is a working forest, I don't know what does. There's the lock, just popped out from the trees. Look at that, so nice. And then down here, there's actual forestry going on. This must be where the truck came from. See the dog in the digger. <laughs> Hi Vikes, you alright? How you doing? Not bad, you sure? Sort of staying dry, not really. Oh, you should be alright for the day. Yeah, you? not too bad. At least it's a bit warmer, hey? Ah, oh, definitely. That makes a big change. Yeah, it? yeah. You guys clearing this whole area? Ah, uh, just a wee bit left up the top. Nice. How long has that taken? Uh, maybe three months. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, big job. <laughs> this is a small one though. Is it? <laughs> what does the wood get made into? Uh, a lot of different stuff. 
quite a lot of it goes into pallet wood just now. Okay, yeah. Quite a lot of it's uh, biomass. Nice. So for fuel energy. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. That. Okay, cool. Yeah. Fair. Ninety percent of it's all getting used for that sort of thing. Cause yeah. They don't actually have use for logs in that now. Really. Which is a shame because. Yeah. Decent wood just getting burnt. Man, that's sad. But what happens to this area? Just left to grow back up then, or? Uh, it'll be replanted within the next few years. Okay, yeah. It's just like a farm in a sense. Yeah. But except for that, it takes 35 to 40 years to grow. Giant Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet man, well listen, enjoy your day, yeah? You too, have Take a good care, day. bye. Truthfully, it was pretty shocking to hear that there was so little use for all of this wood. The Glen is certainly a stunning place, but this huge forestry operation definitely changed the vibe of the hike. Still, in a strange way, it felt like a link between the past and the present, since most of these trees were planted after the World Wars. <laughs> that sign looks so little compared to the wood. Look how big that one was in the middle. Wow. The thing I did love about the walking here was the abundance of silver birch a tree that's native to the UK and easily identifiable. Many of the trees played host to thick lichens and mosses, arguably micro-ecosystems in themselves. Silver birch are sensitive trees with a thin bark, and yet together they stood tall and gave off a comforting presence in the midst of all of the chaos. Ah, going down. Corimony, this way. Look how dense these trees are. I feel like I'm in a castle moat surrounded by giant banks and trying to snork on my way out. <laughs> Points for the imagination, I mean, come on. <laughs> there it is. Proper rain. Hat away time. You can always tell the weather forecast by the hat I'm wearing. If this hat goes away, it's properly raining. It's time. Um, excuse me, what is this? <laughs> that was not part of the plan. Let's get other, oh no, it's one of these ones. Sometimes it's so difficult to do one-handed. Like a bosh! Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Alright, I think this way is going to be my best option. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> Lovely burn there, and then boom, bomb site. <laughs> this is a proper mud party here. The coos have been at work. I'm presuming I'm just going straight, which is, uh, <laughs> you know, it's fine. To be fair, a tractor's done its part here. Hey, yay, yay. Help. Um, um, you know what, that's not too bad. I'll be honest with you, most of this is not mud. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Ah, <laughs> oh, stunning, look at this. Proper little river. So nice. And then according to my map, this should be Shenval, the settlement where we pick up the road for a restretch of walking. So lovely. I quite like these houses. They're very, very nice looking houses <laughs> with their individually colored doors. <laughs> so good. Right, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm at a junction here. Corimony, I'm saying that completely wrong, is this way, next to the bus shelter, and let's go in there whilst we chat. So, 2022, this trail was officially updated to bypass the stretch of road that we're gonna have uh, in a minute, or that the route originally followed, but I'm gonna be really lazy. Because <laughs> why would I want to do double the walking when I can just follow the road? So I'm gonna stick on the original route. 
Um, the other road is sort of like a triangle with two V's, two, two V sides of a triangle, and I'm gonna do the bottom side. So that's my plan. Um, yeah, so about another kilometer, kilometer and a half of forest, and then we'll pick up the road for a wee chunk. Snack time, anyone? Hopefully that makes sense from my little hideout. We've just come from here. The new route goes that way, but this signpost, in all fairness, does still say this way, so that's where we're gonna go. It's quite rainy. Well, I waited and the rain has gone away. Okay, I feel like I'm doing today in chapters. This is officially chapter three. Let's do it. Oh, also, mate, it's freezing. Why have I got my shorts on? What am I doing with my life? Am I going the right way? Yes, cool, keep going. Right, literally, down to the road. Look at that though. See the uh, mountains there? It's getting real, it feels like we're making progress into the highlands. Or into the mountains, anyway. I just, I'm not entirely sure that this new stretch is even open, because the signposts haven't been changed. And given that this route feels very up to date and on point, I don't know, it just leaves me like, hmm. Maybe I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Makes a change. <laughs> Through the gate. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Here we go. It's all a little bit confusing. I mean, it's not. Well, it is, actually. Afric way goes this way. Clearly the sign's broken. And these don't actually represent the way. Also, what the flick? There's a chicken. Or a turkey, or... What, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, this is the most important thing that's happened to me today, I think. Hi, little chicken turkey things. A turkey. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but um, that happened. This is White Bridge over the River Endrick. Nice. There's the river. Beautiful, gnarly. But it's just coated in this lichen. You've got to love it. <sighs> now let's check out this main road. I really should put waterproof trousers on. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, bus shelter. Quick. <laughs> Why do they always appear when it rains properly? <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is great. Right, I'm gonna put my waterproof trousers on this time. Stop talking, start doing. I mean, sadly, I can't work on the assumption I'm always gonna find a... Oh, no! I picked up my partner's waterproof trousers and not mine. <laughs> oh, never mind. I think it'll be, it'll be interesting. Yeah, no, I can't guarantee I'm always gonna find a bus stop, so I need to act. <laughs> oh, goodness me. This trip, look at these. <laughs> I checked them as well. Here's what it is. Right, waterproof trousers are on. Slightly uh, falling down, but I think we can work with it. Rain is stuffed. That's a lie. The rain is eased. Sign. Let's go. Ah, here we go. So this is where the route would have come out from the V and this is where we'd rejoin the road. So that means it's probably 100 meters on and we'll be turning left into some farmland and then back up into the forest. It's getting real now. Well then truly into this final third. Bish bash bosh. Oh my 
gosh, you're quite high up above me. <laughs> Hi. And you, you're very pretty. Little race horse. A little big race horse. Seems I have a new friend. How cool is that? <laughs> They're such beautiful horses. And apparently we're all going for a walk together today. <laughs> Is this my footpath? Where is my footpath? I'm slightly confused now. Oh, that's the horse stable. Oh no. Have I missed it? Oh dear. Right, so just after the bridge at Milness, literally straight after there should have been a footpath on this side, but there wasn't. So now I'm on the road and I've just got to keep going essentially to Lock and Dub. And then that's where I go into the forest. Right, so. More road walking. It seems like, well, as far as I'm aware, or can see, um, and, 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 and I'm living out, <laughs> the footpaths are not quite done yet, because um, it certainly wasn't signed. Thankfully, after a little bit of confusion, I passed yet more forestry work and eventually found the footpath that I needed. I found this track here, and I know I can take this to join the Afric Trail. So let's have a look. Oh, there you go. So there's new off-road African Tailway. That's helpful. I don't quite know what went wrong there, but we're back on path now. Let's go. Once again, though, yes, it's uh, mass destruction, <laughs> but we can see. Mainly see the rain coming in, but still. Also, you see this? paved trail here. I saw that way back from the road and I wondered if I was supposed to be on that. I'm certainly none the wiser, but it arrives here. Maybe this is the future African tailway. Wow, look at that. We're actually getting a bit of a skyline now. I'm buzzing about tomorrow, absolutely buzzing. Hang on. No. No, the buzzing is, is just the pylons. Never mind. The thing with walking in the rain, particularly in a pine forest, is it's actually quite peaceful. <laughs> There's no wind. And you're just listening to the split splattering of water falling on the leaves and bark and grasses around you. And obviously, yes, my head, my... <laughs> Hood, but uh, I don't know, I just feel very immersed in nature right now, which is an exceptionally enjoyable experience. And if I'm quite honest, this is one of the reasons why I like hiking. Cycling, fantastic. Cover a lot of ground very fast, get it done. But hiking forces you to slow down so much so it can be tedious at times. But in that slowness, it connects you to the pace of the world around you. I feel like a transitory raindrop through these grounds. The rain comes and goes, and so will I. It's all very metaphorical and uh, deep and meaningful if you want it to be. <laughs> oh, I can tell you, I really love this path. Look at this. Look at these trees. They're just stunning. The beautiful waistcoats of lichen just all the way down the trunk, all of the branches, everything. Just stunning. I love it. I'm so happy. <laughs> so all of this lichen, um, to be fair, it's particularly reindeer moss that's hanging off the trees, is a clean air indicator species. So it only grows where the air is genuinely clean and good for it to take hold on the bark. Really cool stuff. And in Norway, the reindeers eat this. This lichen is what sustains those big beasts. Turn up a junction. Oh, here we go. Last push into Canic. We've got blue skies opening up for a moment. And this is the last turn. So the settlement's just over there. And the blue sky, because sharing is caring, right? It's just there. Ta da! <laughs> also, I'm quite ready for a brew. 
Look at this, I have an actual shadow. The sun has properly come out. And alongside, this is the River Glass. And there's a the bridge. And that's Cannock. Yay! I have to be honest, I didn't really know what to expect with today's walk, but I really enjoyed it. I think um, if I was like two and a half weeks into a hike and just feeling really tired, it would have been tedious and long and boring, but it's not. It's my first day's hike in 2023 on a multi-day trail and it's felt really good. Um, so that's 13 miles, something like that, under the belt. Feeling good actually, a few niggles and aches, but I'm sure I'm just uh, loosening up as we get going. And I genuinely am really excited about tomorrow. It's gonna be good. It's sort of a day of two halves, but we'll do that tomorrow. First, let's cross over this rather full river <laughs> and see if we can find a cafe. So this river is a confluence between the River Afric and the River Canic. And then you get the River Glass, which is this one. I mean, it looks like black glass, I suppose you could say. <laughs> Canic, woohoo! <laughs> this is just unbelievable, the sunshine. So good. Here we have the holiday park. They've got chalets and it's just a little bit more upmarket, shall we say. And then I'm just 200 yards further on at my campsite. Ta-da! Kind of camping and caravan park. That's me. And so is this, actually. <laughs> Let's go. Oops, through the flood. Oh, Hiya, how are we doing? Good. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Do you have space for a weary traveller? Yeah, no problem. Happy yeah. days. Now I definitely lucked out as the cafe was still open. So I headed in for a warm brew. At closing time though, I stepped back outside into the chilly air to pitch up. It was all rather idyllic really birds singing, the river flowing by, trees about to burst into spring life. That was until this happened. Ah, help! <laughs> Jeez, that's some rain. Ugh. We got in just in time. <laughs> well, I was gonna go and look at the church, but let's wait five minutes. left of my coffee since I spilt half of it by accident. My massive disaster for 6am in the morning. Um, seems to be a little bit of sunrise going on out there but anyway I'm just getting half a tent meals breakfast down me. I repackaged it into this plastic bag and I'm just having half because it's an 800 calorie meal and don't need that. I could eat that but I don't need that. Um, today I am basically just, just going to push as far as I can into Glen Affric. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, if a little apprehensive about the wild camp at the end of the day um, but the further I get today the better it's going to be my chances tomorrow of making the taxi um, so yeah let's see how we get on first of all coffee and breakfast cheers to that after breaking camp I set off to rejoin the way I knew instantly that it was going to be a very good day as the low-lying clouds were slowly being burnt off by the sun Okay, let's do it. Day two on the African Tailway. So, River Glass, <laughs> Spa, and we're heading up here, which is Glen Canick. Uh, and very shortly, once we've ascended a little bit, we'll be heading off into the hills. I also have to show you this beautiful teapot collection. It's really, really cool. How can you not love this? I saw it yesterday in the pouring rain. Some of these collected all of this china. <laughs> It's just fantastic. Mm. And then it goes all the way around. But we want to go that way, so let's go. <laughs> there are no words <laughs> to describe the beauty of this morning. 
It is outstanding. Oh, that sun is just revitalizing. The birds are singing. I can see the dusting of snow on the mountains ahead. And these are some of the highest mountains outside of the Great Glen and Glen Coe. They're certainly to be marveled at. Despite being on the fringes of a somewhat urban area, the wildlife here was clearly thriving. All around was an endless chorus of joy, and it felt like spring had well and truly taken hold. A few hundred metres into the road ascent, I reached the Clan Chisholm Society Memorial Cairn, built in 1968. I found the quote on it rather poignant. It read, Remember the people from whom you have come. Fitting, really, as I set off, alone, into the Scottish wilds. We've reached our junction point where we are heading off to the west and ahead along the road is basically Glen Carnick, which is phenomenal in itself. Um, but yeah, this is it. Time to enter one of the most beautiful glens in the entire country. Bring it on. And you can see we've got this uh, forestry track here, a bit like yesterday, and it's going to be our partner for much of the day today, but thankfully not all. Oh, what's this? Comar Dun, 200 metres. Why not go and have a look? Might be able to see back down at, over Canuck. Gee, look at this. So with the clear felling, again, we can see and I'll be honest, I was mildly sceptical about coming up here on the forestry track, but, well, 200 metres in, a bit further than that. So far, so good. So, what have we got here? Comar, wood, done. Done is sort of a family household. In the northern front of the rooms of the Dunn, a large stone-built circular building set within the enclosure, commanding views of the countryside below. So it would have been plonked on there. See all the stone and rubble on top. It's fascinating, isn't it? And naturally, we have to go and stand on top of it. Hopefully, see out over the river glass. And of course, behind now, which is actually in front, then Africa itself. This is rather nice. So, we're entering someone's house. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Look at that. Absolutely bonkers. Wow. Panic, river glass, big open glen, all the way, all the way around to the snow kissed mountains of Glen Africa over there. Fantastic. Big groundworks here. I don't know if it's rock or what it is there after, but that's a big chunk of rock. Wow. That's a rather all right, isn't it? Look at that! Bonkers! That song fresh is going for it. Standing there, listening to that song thrush singing its heart out, I felt totally inspired. Sure, I might have been walking on a broad track, which is not everybody's cup of tea, but the walking felt endlessly enticing, and I was really glad to have not allowed the soggy forecast to put me off heading out into the hills. Blimey, lots come down here. Whew, a lot of wood, a lot of trees. It is so peaceful up here. And you know, it feels like we're really starting to get in with the Scott Pines, the Caledonian forest. This is the third largest reserve of Caledonian trees of pine wood in the UK. I just can't wait to walk through it, like I'm really genuinely buzzing. Very shortly we'll be dropping down to Dog Falls and we'll cross over the River Afric onto the other side and follow essentially the forestry track on the eastern, uh, sorry, southern side of the river. But I'm really just enjoying being up high right now, like knowing that we're going to drop down a bit is like meh. Up here, the sun 
Oh, jeez, just heart is singing right now. Very, very happy. <laughs> I was constantly stopping to look around, so it felt as though the miles were passing really slowly. And yet eventually I arrived at the small path that would take me down to Dog Falls. And you know what? It was a beautiful path, to say the least. This is literally one of the coolest paths ever. Oh, what's this? Maybe it's something to do with the hydroelectrics. There's been a lot of wires around here. Oh God, that's quite eerie. Hello. Nope, I'm good. Look at this. And then a couple hundred meters on from that weird tunnel of death, we have Dog Falls Car Park. There's a sign, give it a hug, spread the love. I have to be honest, there's something to be said for walking somewhere you've been before. It's nice just reflecting on the memories with my friend. Feels good. Uh, I hope these will be here. Toilets. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in every trip I end up filming a toilet, but. See you in a minute. Right, dog falls. Here we go, look at this. Nice billboard, love it. Glen Affric is one of Britain's largest and richest native woodland areas. So good. <laughs> so when I'm there, I'll know that I'm doing all right. That's the youth hostel. I'm not sure I'm gonna make it to there. So this is Strawberry Cottage. That's my goal is to go from here to here and find somewhere approximately halfway between there and the youth hostel to camp up. There's a long way away yet. <laughs> Over the river Afric. So nice. I instantly fell in love with the river Afric. It was a broad, rushing river with a wildness that's really hard to find in the UK these days. And back up the other side. <laughs> wow. Just 100 meters, 50 meters even, on from the bridge. And it's just like back to the silence. It didn't look like much, the falls there, but it certainly powered through with the sound. Quite an up this. Thankfully, I know that there'll be a good reward. Hey, here we go. This is what I mean. Let me introduce you to the viewpoint. Beautiful bilberry bushes all around. It's just heaven, this is. Truthfully, I think it's really hard to beat Scotland in the sunshine, particularly in the season where there's no midges. <laughs> and look at this view down over Glen Afric. Happy days. Ah, oh, this is just absurd. <laughs> Welcome to Glen Afric, my friends. <laughs> Little did I know, as I stood looking out over this immense view, that things would only get better from here. And peaks like Mam Sodhale and Cairn Ia, the highest mountains north of the Great Glen, would guard my day's journey. But that was the viewpoint, by far one of my all-time favourite views. It's, uh, it's interesting actually because when we get down to the River Africa car park, which is around six miles away now of this, <laughs> um, the route basically stays on the southern shore of Loch Afric. Uh, but when I came here with my friend, we walked the northern shore just up and down and uh, you can make it into a loop if you want to, but it's going to be really interesting seeing what this side of the loch is like because the northern side was just indescribably beautiful. Uh, so I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. First of all, 
the River Effort car park is my next goal. I'm going to try and get my speedy boots on and just make progress when I'm just on these straightforward forestry tracks like this one. There's always lots of uh, forestry going on still. You just feel completely in the middle of nowhere and then it's like, huh, diggers. <laughs> Eventually, the route dropped down to the side of the lock, though views out over its waters were few and far between. Yet, what the trees took away, they also gave. Views of themselves. There were some amazing examples of the sturdy and stoic-looking Scots pines along this stretch, each boasting a unique character and stories. These were trees worthy of appreciation, a connection to a time when this whole region hosted a great, thriving forest and was home to an array of animals like lynx, wolves, bears and wildcats. There was, of course, an abundance of silver birch, too. We met this tree earlier. And the forest floor was carpeted with lovely shrubs, like bilberry, currently in flower, and different types of heather, too. I just show you something. Obviously I'm walking along looking at things, realizing I like forests because I like birds. Birds are my friend. But anyway, we have this spot here, which is a bit of a clearing, and I was just looking at it like, hang on a minute. You can see how humans have influenced this piece of land. Now let me show you. So first of all, I'm not convinced these digging holes are anything to do with humans, unless there's a dog, which is entirely possible. And there's a lot of them. But what you can see is obviously we've dug a big hole. Now they're trying to hide it with the rocks and obviously try to protect it. And there's been lots of fires in there. So that ground is probably never, ever, ever going to recover from that. Compaction is one thing. Digging away and burning at it is another. Next up, you can see we've got all these silver birch trees around us. One of my absolute favourites. Really, really lovely. So here you can see they've cut off some bark of a living tree, which completely sucks, possibly to get some of the um, the sap or resin. Then you can see, same here, someone's been chopping something, which is fine, but the axe marks have hit the roots of this tree. Coming down here, that's been sawn off. And then this is the, what I really, really spotted. So again, this is a living tree and silver birch is great because the barks are filled with tannins and very flammable oils but if you peel it off too much like this is kind of like ugh, it's okay uh, it leaves the tree quite unprotected but boom this is not okay <laughs> this has basically left the tree completely exposed you can see it's been cut with a knife here cut with a knife here and it's just heartbreaking because you know whilst i do think this tree will be fine it really does show that just humans so rarely leave no trace even people are like, oh yeah, well, you can't see that our tents were here. It's like fire, hole in the ground, and to exaggerate, chopped up trees. I also mentioned compaction. So these lands with their mosses uh, and lichens are really quite sensitive grounds, you know? And yeah, cool, we might think that just putting our tent up for a night or two is no bother, but it is bother, because it can take a long time for the ground to bounce back from the compaction that we cause as humans. Now, it's not something to get completely obsessed about, particularly not here, just mention mosses and lichens. Yes, they're delicate little ecosystems, but they bounce back quite quickly. They're pioneering species. But when we're high up in the mountains, you know, for example, wild camping in the Alps, those are very, very fragile soils, thin soils, and they need protecting. And that is why up here in Scotland, more laws and legislations are coming in place regarding wild camping in order to protect the land because yeah cool okay one group goes and does that the landscape's going to bounce back eventually but 
two, three, four groups, however many, over a season, over whatever winter, it's just, it does impact the grounds. And that's why around Loch Lomond and the Trossachs, you've got um, camping permits that are required between March and September or October. And uh, whilst I find it really difficult, I do get it because, okay, yeah, cool. A lot of trees here, but I don't know. Why should nature be harmed just so that we can come out and enjoy it? I don't think that's how it should work, really. Food for thought, anyway. <laughs> yeah. This is a nice patch of forest. It's so interesting how it like, changes energy as I walk. Some stretches just feel like I have to hold my breath and be as quiet as I can. And others feel really alive and well. There's definitely a well patch. Love it. <laughs> so River Africa back to the right. And we continue on to the left. Into the mountains. I was hoping to get my tent out to see if I could dry it a little bit. But there's a big building collection of clouds. <laughs> I pushed along that stretch, I'll be honest. <sighs> Maybe I just keep going. High five the trail sign. Nah. Boom. Let's do it. Right. There's loads of good spaces. This is a good spot. Had a couple back there as well. Question is, why am I not stopping? I just keep walking. <laughs> This happens from time to time. <sighs> yeah, this will do. There's not really any views to speak of, but I don't feel I can be guaranteed that's gonna happen anyway with all these trees around. So this will be my stopping place. Oh, view, I take that back. <laughs> nice. The map is out, so this was the car park that I've passed the junction to and I've stopped about here just before this lock and where we'll see the stream a bit later. Um, you can see Africa Lodge here and essentially get over this bridge a kilometre or so away and then it's just actually up into the hills a little bit. It's around 300 metres, something like that. Um, and yeah, just going to continue all the way along and uh, when I get to Strawberry Cottage and the Ford, that's where I'll be quite happy and I'll allow myself to start thinking about camping and I want to try and get another couple of miles on from there. So, it's just gone two o'clock. So I feel like I'm making good time. And uh, yeah, I have to be honest, you know, whilst it's nice being able to see the peaks above the trees, um, I know that when we walked on the other side of the lock, you could see so much more. Um, it was much more open. So. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to continue our journey today and see how we get on. I can see on the map that, you know, the trees and forest cover does fade. So hopefully we'll be able to see as we get into the Kintail Mountains. But one thing at a time. First, the Afric Lodge. The Afric Lodge and Estate has been owned by David Matthews, the father-in-law of Pippa Middleton, since 2008. It was an uncomfortably picturesque property and is actually open for bookings for use of the spa and well-being building or workshops that take place on site. So funny because all of the trees, the fences, everything is strategically placed so you can't really see the lodge with a super clear vision which is fair enough protecting privacy. Um, there's some dodgy people out there who are willing to go to extreme lengths to get a photograph but anyway the lodge is here in just the most picturesque location. See it behind me here. Um, so it's an Edwardian hunting lodge essentially, and uh, now has connections with the royals. That doesn't really bother me to be honest. I'm not like, oh, famous people. It's more just like, this is absolutely stunning. <laughs> um, to just be here in the absolute heart of Glen Affric is just second to none. And uh, well, you know, one day, when I've earned my millions, maybe I'll go visit. <laughs> ah, or not. Let's go.
definitely does feel like it's getting real. Just with every step, we're getting further and further into the glen, closer to these mountains. I mean, look at that, that is a sizable chunk of snow up there. <laughs> it's just so nice. Okay, and there's just casually another house here. Did not expect that. Clearly didn't look at the map hard enough. <laughs> Imagine just getting your Sainsbury's delivery there. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh yeah, to number one Glen Afric, please. Wait a minute. Is that another house? No. Huh? What? What is it? It must be some generator. I guess that's how these homes power themselves. With their very own little like HEP scheme or whatever it is. Not what you expect to find out here at all. Can we see in? Danger of death. Maybe I don't want to see it. Oh, key safe. No, it's just a generator. Biomass. Huh. And then this is the footpath to Kugi, however you say it. And then my final, out of three points of interest in a 10 meter stretch, is the river. And just as this weather comes in, I'm going to get a water resupply and then get battened down because it just looks quite dark. I probably should get prepared for that. <laughs> this was Alt Garve, flowing down from a lock that was nestled high up in the hills above me. So easy with this. So this is my Catadyne B3 filter. It's the second one I've had, it's one litre. The flow rate's really good. You can fill up a bottle so quickly. And then the other thing I've been doing to help me drink more, if I can find where I put it, here we go, uh, is I've brought some powder. <laughs> Don't read into that. Um, essentially it's like electrolyte powder um, and flavouring. So I've been putting a little bit of it into a bottle and it's helping me drink a lot more. So I'm going to do just that right now. Alright, onwards. We have water, we have hope, <laughs> we have uh, lake crossing. Nice. <laughs> huh, that is a cool stone seat thing. I don't know why I have to investigate it. It's a piece of granite. Cool, let's go. Uh -huh. Okay, it just got real. Look at this. Glen Affric just down there. And this is our path. Wow. The route stretched out into the distance and I couldn't believe the site I was walking into. I knew that without a doubt, things from here forward were about to get very epic indeed. It was an unbelievable scene. Mountains, the lock and ancient trees, all framed by an ever-changing light, dancing and twisting with the winds. It felt like I was in heaven. This was surely Scotland at its best. Well, thankfully, despite everything, I'm still out running the rain and it is just impossible to put into words the beauty that surrounds me. Like, for me, this is really where the trail begins. This is what I'm walking for, is this, these views. This is what I fell in love with when I came with my friend and walked the northern shore of Glen Affric. I mean, it's one thing to go for a little stroll somewhere. It's another to want to come back and do a multi-day hike, but <laughs> the rewards, man, they're finally being harvested. And you know, we're just over halfway now into the trail. And really, this is the second half of the route. Coming up is the mountains. 
the big beasts curtaining the way and the glen leading me on ever forwards. Absolutely bonkers. unexpected uh, yeah just going down the drive you know as you do the trees are gone and we're just rewarded with this immense space and what we can see is there's a little crofting house down here or some kind of hut anyway um, and there's Afna Malog which will be passing soon as well which was lived in right until the 1950s so whilst this place seems completely deserted and barren and empty, it's a real hub of activity in its own special way, certainly given its location. <sighs> so deep breath in, let's get cracking. I can't believe what I'm walking into. This is absolutely bonkers. Oh, wow. You know, I have to be honest, I think hiking takes on a greater meaning for me when I'm in places like this. The sense of grandeur and just how little I feel. <laughs> it's reminding me right now quite a lot of my trip to Iceland hiking the Lugavega Trail. Just tiny huts in big places. Just 99% wilderness and 1% people. And that's how it always was before we colonised the earth and took over nature. So it's nice to be somewhere like this, walking on this drover's road through such a spectacular wild place. Just feels harmonious and right inside. I feel quite balanced right now. With the mountains of Kintail now all around, I glimpsed the old settlement of Athna Moloch, now home to a body available for hire, and a few outbuildings owned by the FSC. The last family to live here left in 1952, and the River Afric flows gently by. There's Strawberry Cottage on the right, look. Brilliant. There's a very satisfying wooden bridge. Just gonna put that out there. Let's go. This is it now then, crossed over the bridge and into the glen we go. I think from here it's about 15 miles to Morvik, but essentially it's the mountains now. This is the real thing. Oh, I still have no words to describe this place. Just keep walking. <laughs> After a fleeting hello to Strawberry Cottage, owned and managed by Anchorloch Mountaineering Club, I pressed on into the hills, with the trail stretching on dramatically ahead. So this is the junction for the Loch Afric circuit. So you'd come down there and you'd head off that way or vice versa. I can say that without a doubt, I will return and do that hike at some point, <laughs> the full circle. So stay tuned for another video. <laughs> All right, let's find a campsite. 
in case you ever wonder, locations like this, I end up carrying the camera like this in my arm. The tripod weighs just under a kilogram. The camera itself is best part of two, so that's why I get strong arms. <laughs> if I can call them strong anyway. This is what I'm talking about. The light. And don't get me wrong, there's a big wall of rain coming. <laughs> or at least just over there, but still. The light. <laughs> this is really one of the reasons why I hike. I just love being able to get into places on foot. Just that story that you're telling as you're going, letting it unfold with every twist and turn in the path. It doesn't matter that there's mountaineering huts and you can get here by vehicle. I've walked here, man. It's insane. Well, this is the Lochan. I originally pointed out as my marker on the map, but I think I'm going to keep going a bit further. I'm good. Actually, I've just decided I don't want to risk it. I can see the rain falling now on the lock, and we see this wall is very, very slowly coming towards us. So I'm just going to turn my waterproof cover the right way around now that it's dry and put my coat on because I don't know how this is going to go. Lovely. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have been fair if I'd gone for a whole day without wearing waterproofs. I'll take this. All right, let's try and do this without slipping, because having trousers that are too big is actually surprisingly precarious. <laughs> cool. These skies are definitely starting to look a little bit ominous, though. I think I'll do myself a favour if I get pitched up sooner rather than later. Pretty soon, between sunshine and showers, I found myself crossing into a West Africa estate owned by the National Trust for Scotland. So in theory, I could camp there, 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 <laughs> anywhere I want. And actually, I think that's the plan. Uh, hmm, yeah. What do I want to do about this? It looks like I climb up higher. Okay, hold the phone. I'm gonna keep walking. The water's too loud. There's no way I can handle that. So, I now I'll probably have another kilometer until I find somewhere else, because I've got a bit of a scent. Whew, definitely starting to feel tired. Let's see what we can do with this. Staff really, because down there looks so nice. <sighs> I'm probably a bit more mellow, but well, what is the butt? I don't really know. Keep going. <laughs> Well, as is often the way on these hikes, I'm being very indecisive about where to stop. So I'm still walking, but now I'm just passing a ruin here. And I know that there's a few more along the way. Essentially, these are crops that have been left behind from the Highland clearances. Just a brutal and bloody part of Scotland's history. And you just imagine families, generations growing up here, crofting with their cattle. It's just heartbreaking that they're not here anymore. <laughs> Super duper! So, the path has come down to river level and that's great because it means there's a lot of work behind me now. And I'm literally over the brow from the youth hostel so it's time to find somewhere to stop. And it's nice because it's got flat. I've been looking down over it as I've been walking. You can see that just a bit further up ahead, there should be some really good spots. <laughs> nice. God, this is gonna be an unbelievable place to camp, isn't it? What about here? Sun rises in the east and sets in the west. 
if you know what I'm saying. Oh my life, this is heavenly. Is this literally where I'm going to camp? I can't believe I get to do this, it's bonkers. I was just thinking how funny it is that almost every trip I have a bit of indecision about where to stop for the night. And I guess it's just, there's so many options. Uh, everything I had decided before was right. But I'm really glad that I pressed on to this spot because it's much quieter for me. And I find it's very important for me to be able to hear my surroundings with my brain sometimes being triggered into seeing things it's best for me to be in an environment that I feel very safe and very calm. And with this nice, calm, meandering river here, that sort of ticks those boxes. And I'm really, really excited for the morning uh, to hopefully have a bit of a sunrise. The forecast looks good for tomorrow. And um, I just can't believe that I've just done that distance today. I feel so proud of myself. I've really, really enjoyed it. I have fallen in love with this trail. And I just can't wait to see what tomorrow's got to offer. We're going to actually have some footpath, uh, leave, leave the track for a little bit. Um, so I'm nervous, I'm excited, and I'm also really hungry. I didn't bring enough food. <laughs> so I have dinner tonight. Thankfully, I've got enough food, uh, tea bags to make a brew, so I will survive, don't worry. Um, and then we'll pop out tomorrow in civilization, probably rather hungry. <laughs> it's all good. What a beautiful place to call it a night, you know? Just enjoy the sun going down, reflecting on the mountains for a whole new day tomorrow. Oh, also, I have to go and wash my feet, which I don't want to do, so let's get it done. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know what this scum stuff is, but anyway, feet washing time. All right, all I'm going to do oh, is that. Rather fresh. Whew. That is cold. I'm gonna boil that. This thing is full of almonds and Brazil nuts and couscous and loads of herbs and spices, sun-dried tomato, uh, sunflower seeds. It's just good nutritious stuff and that's one of the reasons why I love using tent meals when I'm out on the trail, like genuinely, because um, I find it keeps me fueled and it's delicious. <laughs> they have some spicy stuff and that doesn't work so well for me, um, but this and their Moroccan one, enough said. Mm. Mm, Something else I've been playing around with on this trip so far is this, which is a Zolio. Uh, essentially, it's a satellite receiver. So right now where I am, in the middle of nowhere, I have absolutely no service. So I couldn't even call the emergency services. So obviously there's an SOS button. And previously I've used the Garmin InReach, but I've just been gifted this by the company to play around with. And... It's cool. I can send messages to my family from, well, here. I feel like I'm still working out how it works and stuff. Um, it's been quite intermittent at times to connecting to the satellite. But right now I've just managed to send a message to my partner, um, basically saying I'm at camp and I've received one as well to hear about her day. And it's just so cool. This little thing allows me to send a message from the wilderness. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure it's going to come on many adventures in the future. Morning. That was a very long night. 
now coffee so so cold and quite panicked in my head i couldn't really relax so i don't know if i actually slept but the sun is coming up and my tent is frozen yay <laughs> this is frost <laughs> Day three is underway. Left the campsite behind. What a stunning, stunning morning it is. Still very cold. <laughs> um, and given that I didn't really sleep last night because of the cold and my mind playing tricks on me, um, I'm feeling okay. I'm glad that I got moving. My uh, mental space is positive and I'm still really looking forward to today's walk. So, around 12, 13 miles to Morvik. Let's go. It's quite destructive this, but it's also very cathartic. Sorry, nature. I do love you. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was cold. <laughs> okay, let's go before this gets damaging. <laughs> Just as I'm walking along, I can smell wood smoke. What that means is the U-Poster is not very far away. Hopefully just around this corner. And there it is, right there. Just before reaching the youth hostel, I spotted two red deer grazing on the far bank. The red deer is Scotland's largest surviving mammal and is an integral part of the Caledonian forest. Most animals live to an average of around 10 to 15 years and they feed on the surrounding grasses and small shrubs, just like heather. Deer are constantly on the move in search of food. In summer, they graze higher grounds to avoid midges and biting flies. But in the winter, they drop low to make the most of the shelter and food available in the valleys. For me, it's almost always a treat to see a deer. And yet, in many areas, they have to be culled in order to maintain a balance for the land. Too many deer can prove disastrous to flora and seriously hinder the natural succession of wild places. Leaving the deer, I finally reached the Glenafric Youth Hostel, 
It's an eco-friendly building with a wind turbine and solar panels and sits totally immersed in its natural surroundings with no Wi-Fi and no phone reception. It makes for a great base for those looking to head up into the hills and bag some Munros. Alright then, goodbye Bozzy, here we go. So this stretch as we move on towards the footpath is the part I was getting anxious about. And you know, don't get me wrong, I've walked trails all around the world, I mean particularly Europe anyway. And uh, <laughs> when a guidebook says, you know, experienced walkers only and um, navigation skills needed, I always get a bit nervous, like I'm a mountain leader, I know I can navigate, but I still get nervous because I just I don't know what the extremes are of that, like how much of a warning is it? Um, so yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, weather like today is going to make this so much easier. And in the mist and poor Scottish conditions that are very common, it would be pretty nasty, I'm sure. But also, I don't know, you're walking through a glen, you've got mountains on either side, just don't go down the wrong one. <laughs> So we just got the track for another couple hundred metres and then we're on to the footpath. Oh, more of the white stuff. Look at that. It's so pretty. Why am I destroying it? <laughs> Look at it. This is bad. I'll leave the rest. <laughs> Bit of a... Uh, Burn crossing here. Thankfully, there's a bridge. We are officially on a footpath, people. <laughs> a boggy one, actually. Just like that. <laughs> All righty. Wet feet might be the order of the day. Et voila. See the <laughs> steam there as the water's all evaporating. Well, I had a moment of confusion from the bridge as to which way to go. Essentially, you have to go back on yourself. The bridge just must be in a strategic place for bridge building. And as you can see, I'm on a track, which uh, I also didn't expect. So I'm actually just keeping an eye on the map to make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> It shows very clearly on my map as a footpath. I'm very fine if it's like this the whole way. <laughs> it's uh, just much more enjoyable. That is, uh, that's quite a puddle. Quite a nicey puddle. Oh god, that's quite a jump, isn't it? Hmm, I think, I think that way is uh, the correct way to handle this. <sighs> Ahead, I've just spotted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine deer, red deer. So that's 11 I've seen today already. They are incredibly, incredibly well camouflaged in this brown landscape. And it's really been quite hard to see through the viewfinder, but I can see there's at least two males and they both still have their antlers. But being now mid April, it's time for them to start dropping them. And it's not uncommon sort of in April to go for a walk and find a set of antler racks. <laughs> it's a dream yet to be fulfilled by me. Also, I just really admire the ease at which they move through this landscape. And oh, one, two, three. Oh God, there's, there's far more than nine up there. <laughs> uh. God, there's so many deer. I can't really film them, but there's a ton down there. 
how many can you see? They're sort of just coming together now as well. I really can't get over this experience. It's like walking through the Alps, just an alpine morning. Snow-capped peaks, nice path, good air temperature. I'm in a t-shirt in April in Scotland. It's bonkers. It's just really indescribable, this experience. I absolutely, I'm head over heels in love with this place. Ah, oh, and there's the body. Still a little bit early, but I have to have a nosy inside, see what it's like. Hopefully it won't disturb anyone. Camden Bobby. Here we go. Beautiful basic setup. A few bunks. Bish bash bosh. Body book. Snowed in at the body in April. That's the 12th of April 2023. That is the day before I started. There was snow here. Ah, oh, but then. That day when I was stuck with my van was really, really heavy rain. So look at that, white out. Stuck in a bar bobby all night with no firewood or any sort of, I uh, can't read that. Stayed out most of the night sharing our depleted food story. <laughs> oh, shame. Well, as fate has it, I'm very glad I started my trail when I did because this is certainly not a white out. I'm inferring that we are in a glacier landscape now because there's what looks like more rains sort of just dotted around all of these mounds which are basically big lumps of sediment left behind by glaciers. Um, and we're sort of just weaving our way in and out of them which is kind of fun. Also weird to think that we'd be under meters and meters and meters and meters and meters and meters and meters of ice. Rather chilly. <laughs> To add to my alpine comment earlier, we can now be in the Atlas Mountains. But no, it's Scotland. Beautiful, beautiful Scotland. It's interesting actually because whilst being here looking at all these big mountains I have no desire to be up high and quite often I do but I find I come to Scotland and I'm just happy being in the landscape rather than sort of on top of it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they're stunning. Being up high in the highlands is second to none but yeah just feeling really really content right now. Very much enjoying this path. Huh, well here you go, look. This is a big slab and yeah, there you go, glacial striations. So you see these sort of lines, almost like mini fissures coming down. And this way, look, that's a much better example actually. Boom, boom has been carved away by ice over thousands of years. Crazy, isn't it? 
shaping pretty much everything we see around us, really. Many of the rocks here date from a geological era known as the Neoproterozoic and are around 900 million years old. As well as ice shaping this landscape during the last ice age, in more recent history, sheep have shaped the lands too. By grazing the valleys and the hillsides, they keep native plant species from growing and taking over, which is both a good and a bad thing. Ultimately though, they do hinder the degree to which the glen can be <laughs> wild. Jeez, every step, sort of rounding the glen a little bit further. Now we have these new peaks ahead. That one there is striking with its uh, geological patterns. <laughs> and that path just continues to roughly contour all the way, all the way. Rewind. I need water. Okie dokie, this is our steep descent now to the valley bottom and the river. So we are now following the River Crow uh, and it's the crow that's going to take us all the way to Morvik. I'm looking forward to getting down to the valley bottom, see what the energy is like there, but up here in the mountains it's been completely fantastic. person on a mountain bike. Well, pushing the mountain bike. Not gonna lie, that looks like a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. How much does that weigh? Oh, 20, 25 kilos. Oh wow. Yeah, something like that. Strong man. Oh, well, silly man. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you aiming for? Uh, I'm heading to Tyndrum. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, cool. So almost there. Where did you start? In Tyndrum. Oh, so you're doing a loop? Yeah, I'm doing the oh, loop, wow. I'm doing the Highland Trail 550. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, nice. So it goes over the east coast, yeah. and all the way to, what is it, Ben, ben Moor, I think. Oh, wow. And then you go down on the west coast. That's bonkers. <laughs> How long yeah. does that take? Uh, I think this is day 12. Day 12. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, that is a pretty severe drop off. I wonder if we'll get a waterfall down there. But anyway, we're sort of looping around, thankfully not just going woo and jumping off. Although, right conditions and all that. But anyway, <laughs> just, wow, the scale of this place. Um, hello. Yes, yes, there is a waterfall. <laughs> oh, wow. I have no idea what this magnificent waterfall was called, but it blew my mind. I stood there gawping at it for what felt like forever, and it really was an unexpected surprise. I feel another refill is in order. Isn't that just brilliant? So there's the hut, the mountaineering hut owned by Edinburgh University. And this is the valley that's gonna take us all the way to the end of the trail. Feels a bit surreal, really. I'm not gonna lie though, I'm uh, feeling a bit flat on energy at the moment. Um, I think combination of not having had enough to eat and not having slept um, are definitely starting to hit me a little bit. But all is good and I'm just trying to stay hydrated and keep making progress when I can. We finally reached the river, the Crow. Whew. Look at this, still a magnificent gorge. Remember, see, we were up there somewhere. It's very deceptive. It's taking quite a long time to descend.
Um, I seem to have gone wrong. <laughs> Is there meant to be a bridge here? I don't think I'm the only one to have done this because there's like a proper path here. <laughs> there's a bridge. Woohoo! Here we are. Glenlift House sits under the Five Sisters of Kintail and was built in the late 19th century. It is now leased from the National Trust for Scotland by Edinburgh Uni and has a memorial to Elliot Woodburn and Fred Haddon who both heartbreakingly died in a storm on Ben Nevis in May 1955. Back on the track. Good stuff. So I made it here with more stops than anticipated. <laughs> and now it's on the track with the ways of Morvik. So it's a great time to start to reflect on the journey and uh, well, just dwell on the many, many highs and sights and views that we've seen along the way. This part of the Glen felt like yet another transition. Wide open space and a flatness leading me forwards. Naturally, it made for easy walking. And before long, I turned to wave my last goodbyes to the snow-capped peaks that had guided me this far along the way. I felt immensely fulfilled at this point, as the miles disappeared beneath my boots, and found myself already looking forward to my return to the region. Eventually, sheep appeared, and then vehicle marks in the soil, and finally, buildings. That was when I really knew I was super close to the end. Look at this, actual tarmac. <laughs> Whilst I love being in the mountains for all their splendour and glory, there is certainly something to be said for a riverside footpath in spring. That's good to be back amongst the trees. Flowers in bloom, leaves vibrant and peppery. This last leg to the National Trust for Scotland Kintail Ranger Station and the way's end was a real delight. What a peaceful place to finish though. Wow. And then, just here, <laughs> this is us folks, the end of the Afric Kintail Way. So this is it, the official end of the way. My goodness me, 45 miles from Drum the Jocket to here in Morvik. Not via the road, because why would you drive when you can hike? And it has just blown my mind time and time again. I can't believe what I've just had the pleasure of experiencing is just the most phenomenal landscape. I think by far my favourite landscape that I've experienced so far in Scotland. And I've done a fair few Scottish trails now. <laughs> but, you know, this route is more than just big mountains and beautiful rivers. It's got a story to tell. You know, we've talked and seen the, the crofters' homes that are abandoned and half falling down. And we've seen how the glacier has scoured and marked the landscape. So these are all things that have formed this place as it is today, as I walk through as a modern pilgrim. And I think when you really open your eyes and heart to that on a route, it has so much more depth and so much more meaning. Like I'm not the first person to have traveled across this route. And it's really not as remote as it feels simply for the fact that people have lived there for thousands of years and animals thrive there. And this is just, oh, it, it's that story. And you know, now having had the chance to tell my own story as well, it's really just pulled everything together and reminded me that, you know, we are all storytellers. We are all writing a script as we go along, writing each chapter as we go along. And I think it's, it's really important to include nature in that. You know, I make these films to inspire and empower people to get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health. It's as simple as that. And that message 
is so important because whether you're up on the highest mountains or down in the valleys it doesn't really matter so long as you're getting out into nature sometimes it can be a push especially on those rainy days which is always 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 worth it and for me this route has really pulled me into the moment and out of my head in a way that I've needed. It's felt like a bit of a recharge and a reboot, although I'm quite looking forward to getting my boots off. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, just a fantastic experience. So I hope you've been inspired by this journey and reminded that you don't always have to do the highest peaks or the furthest hikes to get out and have wonderful experiences. Thank you so much for watching, folks. And until next time, enjoy your own adventures and stay wild. I'll see you soon. <laughs> So, Morvik is not exactly an easy place to get out of without private transport, and didn't exactly have a lot to keep me busy whilst I waited for my taxi. I did, however, manage to grab an ice cream from the local campsite shop. Although the African Tail Way is just a short trail, I felt as though I had just popped out from another world and sat there, glowing, for the treasured memories of the 45 miles of wild that I had just enjoyed. Thank you.